hoe blij die is dat foutje komt. Hij is zo blij om jou te zien. Hé, hey, zeg maar een keer. Ik ga nu niet thuis te zien. Oeh, knuffeltjes geven. Hè? This morning we will talk about conditioning your dog. There are three major ways that they are conditioned. One could be walking the dog like this. It could even be with this uh, collar, broad collar that protects the neck a little bit more when he's pulling, but more often is used by uh, a pulling harness which distributes the force a lot better than just on the neck as you can imagine. But even the known conditioners sometimes use this collar method as well. Or even solely this collar method. So even though you only have the collar you can still do a lot. Then most use the uh, way of conditioning is uh, on a sled mill. So a mill comprising of slabs is quite the uh, quite free spinning. So this means you can get high speeds with little resistance. So build very high endurance. This is a, a premium way to condition your dog. But that being said, I think also conditioning your dog is good that you are outside and give it also mental experience and uh, experiences instead of just the physical exercise. But mill work very often gives you extreme condition and also the conditions are controlled. So for example if you're preparing for a sporting event and your dog is running through the fields and it hits some uh, glass or something else that strain it, uh, strains its wrist or uh, ruptures a part of its skin or uh, a muscle then you will be in big trouble because the sporting event time will not reschedule that easily and if ever so that's the point why this uh, Flat mill work is very highly uh, regarded. Another cheaper example could be that you have a carpet mill. A carpet mill offers more resistance, it's less free spinning, and uh, is a lot cheaper, of course. Cheaper components and can still work very well. So if you uh, have a a sled mill you can also increase the resistance by giving it an angle so a sloping angle forwards so an increasing angle from the front view of the dock and uh, this can uh, benefit of course because then the dock has to run uphill and can also increase uh, muscle mass that being said a sled mill because of the higher resistance and will take a lot more toll in general and also sled mills are oftentimes on the slope so it's a different type of conditioning the mill giving you the sled mill giving you the free running capabilities and the sled mill giving you so much more resistance that they build more explosive muscles same principle that can be completely uh, uh, on the other hand of the end of the spectrum in conditioning purposes. We also have something that's called the jenny and then for example if this tree is the middle of the jenny you have a circle around it and the dog is chasing then for example what he uh, thinks is a prey over the track but the drawback is of course because they make the turn every time the same way that they uh, will develop and um, not, how do you 
say this. This, this is the, this balance between the left and the right, so it's not symmetric. That was the word that I was looking for. So that could be a drawback. You can cope with that by switching from one side to the other side. So instead of just going this this route, you can also let them go the other route after a while to switch it up. This will help you tremendously. With the Jenny, the biggest thing is that you need space because you want the circle to be quite broad to uh, decrease the strain on the dogs because the smaller the circle, of course, the tighter the turns are. It's like uh, NASCAR racing. If it was a very tight circle, you cannot get to speed if you only have these turning capabilities all the time. So that's uh, that are the main things for conditioning your dog and oftentimes they are also uh, mixed up yeah? so that you have a little bit of one and a little bit of the other also flood pull work is uh, done or uh, the dog pulling on the on the spring the spring that's attached for example on the tree or a bigger tree or especially a wall and then the dog pulls down in the ladder it's important that you have uh, your dog that the back legs will touch the ground a lot of people will show you the dogs uh, free flinging and of course they can they are very strong and they, but they can do that but not the best for the dog it's good that they have some uh, bottom under there at least under their le uh, back legs so i hope you like this video have a great day today we will address a question of a viewer and that question is is there hound blood, so hunting hound blood, in game dogs, such as American Pitbull Terrier? And that question is derived from the fact that some lines of American Pitbull Terrier have a hound dog-like appearance, so long, uh, floppy ears, which have very little uh, yeah, consistency as compared to the more bulldog type of American Pitbull Terriers and another thing that could be feeding this uh, question is that some Pitbull fanciers call their dogs hounds and that they went out for a hunt so first addressing the ladder we saw a cat the first cat is addressing the ladder also, when they used American Pitbull Terriers for their original purpose, this was also called the hunt sometimes, and that they called their dogs hounds. And hounds is also just another name also for dogs. So that should not be uh, leading in my opinion. And the other thing is, if you look at the appearance of some lions of American Pitbull Terriers, you see that they are completely different in appearance than other lions. Than other lions. And it's just due that there are other breeds involved. It could be, of course. But in my opinion, this is not the case. It's in particular due to lion breeding and inbreeding, which has developed many a uh, dog variety. So also, for example, we have the Norfolk and Norwich type of dogs and the only thing separating them was if they had their ears tip up or tip down that of course can be done by selective breeding and there are many similar cases to be made and the other thing is why I don't uh, find it uh, plausible that there is hound blood involved. A hound is a dog a hunting hound is a dog that is there to chase the prey. And also, American Pitbull Terriers, for example, have high prey drive. This is true. But a hound is there to, to uh, find the prey and then keep it busy. And of course, an American Pitbull Terrier can also do that, but they do that in a completely different way. A hound is more of a baying type of dog, so it barks, it sniffs, and it chases. Whereas an American Pitbull Terrier type of dog that's used for hunting, 
will also chase, but it will engage, it will attack and fight even to the dead. So, for example, an American Pugger Terrier that would not really engage with a hawk, whereas a hound would normally not and just bark at it and stay at a distance. If you have a dog that is not engaging, according to pit rules, in the past, that dog would be a cur. But also, hounds are known as curs because they don't engage, they are not catch dogs. Whereas, pit bull terrier type of dogs, bull type of dog, are catch dogs. So they engage and they hold on. Completely different to hounds. And the hounds might have good stamina, and also good speed, but American Purple Terriers also have very good stamina and good speed, but also more explosive power and the will to go on. So completely different type of dogs. They're in the hunting world they are the opposites. Of course, the boat can be used for hunting, but completely different purpose. So I hope this uh, video helps you out in illuminating this uh, factor. If you want to look at some hound type of uh, American Pibble Terriers, you can find them sometimes in Mexico, also very often the old family red nose. But I think this is a result of inbreeding, line breeding and inbreeding. And uh, those dogs very often have very good stamina, but also are extremely gay. So they will go on despite of enormous injuries which hounds type of dogs normally don't. The other way around is true, especially in some hunting hounds, they breed in some game blood, American uh, football terrier, or a game dog, pit dog blood. Why? To increase the courage and also to increase the ability to also be a, uh, something that can be situational catch dog. For example, Catula Leopard Dog has some bull blood in it, seriously. So it could be either American Pit Bull Terrier or American Bulldog type of blood, or both, which is very likely. And there are many other dogs that are also an infusion of uh, bull blood to increase the characteristic of that breed, and not the other way around. So I hope you like this video. Have a great day. So good morning. Today I answered the question of one of my subscribers who asked me. I know that the English Bull Terrier has been added to the pit dogs, but what else? This is a thing, and it comes because because of uh, storytelling. So when they created the Hinks Bull Terrier, so to say. So the original English Bull Terrier, they told that the dog uh, first won over other dogs in the pit, the pit dogs, and then won confirmation shows on the same day, without a scratch. So it was such a great pit dog. And they also wanted to create the image of a dog that had all the benefits of a pit dog. So also the boldness, and the strength, the tenacity. What was more of a beautiful white specimen. But this is untrue. The English Bull Terrier was originally developed as a show dog. A show dog and also a protection dog for people especially. Whereas normally Bull and Terriers but it was derived of were more people friendly and dog aggressive. The English Bull Terrier was a little bit different developed. So they used the Bull and Terrier, but also the English White Terrier, which is one of the weakest terriers of all at that time and was not uh, good working at all. And some other breeds, such as, for example, Dalmatian, but they also said that. The Borzoi, another running type of dog, was added. I don't know. The Borzoi has a has a down face, a little bit like the 
the English Bull Terrier, but the English Bull Terrier of the past didn't have this clanesque down face that you see now in show dogs. So it is further deteriorated in functionality. That being said, Bull and Terriers were also created by Bulldog blood, fighting Bulldog that is, and Warden Terriers. So a little bit more Terrier blood doesn't mean that it cannot perform, but it will perform less than the half and half Bull and Terriers it was derived of. And this Bull and Terriers also developed into a show breed, namely the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Because the Bull Terrier name was already fixated on this English Bull Terrier, or the White Bull Terrier, also known as the White Cavalier. So, that being said, is there never some Bull Terrier blood introduced in pit dogs? This is not true at all. And why is this? Especially on the islands, you want to have the best dogs. And if, for example, in Ireland, they still kept dogs that needed to perform just as more before being recognized. So also the bull terriers there were a lot better than those that are, were purely used as a show dog. So that's one. The other thing is that by mixing two breeds, and both breeds are quite bold, you can have similar type eh, as the parent uh, dogs, but increase the heterosis. So we call this also in Dutch uh, Bastardkracht, so the, the power of the bastard, so to say. And those genes are then just uh, adding up and filling, again, the gaps that were, were created by interbreeding or inbreeding a lot in the past. And examples of this are the Champion Stormer dog, an Irish dog that even beat uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, champion Psycho, which is one of the best, if not the best, uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, in this case of Irish Lines. That in, in, a, in order of performance and uh, not show. So, that gives you some examples, and also because the Bull uh, Terrier. Uh, had uh, a lot of uh, illnesses, for example, deafness, but also skin problems. They bred in again the Staffordshire Bull Terrier to increase <coughs> its, uh, yeah, its vital components. And that's the reason why you now also see colored uh, English Bull Terriers. So also the English Bull Terrier has gained some uh, additional Staffordshire Bull Terrier blood along the line. So not only the Bull and Terriers of the pit that they used, but also this new injection of blood. So those are some reasons. And also if you look in uh, American history, because we are we talked about the islands, that there are some that have uh, a little bit of uh, English Bull Terrier in their blood. Even the champion Psycho Dog had like, I think, one thirty tooth part of English Bull Terrier did. Well, so much to lose. A lot different than the Champion Storm Dog. And if you look at those interbred dogs, so cross between the performance Staffordshire Bull Terrier and performance Bull Terrier, and they have a long snout and a, a little stop and have an enormous strong jaw very often. So that gives you some additional benefits also in reach. Now back to the American uh, pit dogs. There are some breeders known that created American pit bull terriers of game lines. It also had quite a lot of appearance of the English bull terrier in it. And that was because some breeders bred both. So for example, American pit bull terrier but also the English Bull Terrier, and those were then interbred, sometimes perhaps uh, an accident, but I can also imagine this is uh, done purposely because of the increase of, in heterosis. At this time and age, I don't think this is happening anymore, or very little, because um, yeah, the American Bull Terrier has evolved so much. 
but there are so many different lines that you can upgrade to. The world has become a lot uh, smaller and uh, it's very easy to get access to other plots. Also you could have uh, semen flown in from the other side of the world or just buy a, a dog from the other side of the world if needed to uh, bring in the best in your dogs. So that being said, there are also some uh, modern initiatives. For example, the Staffordshire, Staffordshire uh, Italiano, which is uh, carrying especially Staffordshire Bull Terrier blood, but also some uh, English Bull Terrier blood. So those are the two main sources of uh, genetic material. It's almost 50-50, but they also bred in a little bit of uh, American Pitbull Terrier again, so a modern game dog instead of those uh, game dogs of the past. So I hope this helps. Have a great day. Bye bye. Oh, the dog here on the leash is a better little terrier, so smaller terrier type. Also carrying a lot more terrier type. And it's there, as the name implies, terrier and earth dog to go against foxes and badgers. Nutria, so those are big rats, but also in some countries uh, raccoons or even hawk. But for hawk especially, this dog is not uh, developed. It's just the bravery that sets them apart. Have a great day.